morning, friends. Welcome to Wellversed yet again. And I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Beautiful day here in Benoni, a little chilly, but if you think about it, the cold kills the bugs, and I guess that's important. So please be welcome, and I pray that we'll be blessed because we came to sit around our phones or however we listen to this. And may it just be that God will bless the time we spend. I want to continue. Uh, We're doing the series on John's Gospel. The passage in John's Gospel, which is about the feeding of the 5,000, is in John chapter 6, and it's the first kind of 15 verses in John chapter 6. But just to put a little bit of background, and maybe today's going to be a little different, the four Gospels are obviously a record of of Jesus' ministry, but the first three, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or what we call the Synoptic Gospels. They are very similar in many ways. It was John's Gospel that came somewhat differently into the picture. But in this context today, the feeding of the 5,000, I want to use Mark's Gospel to just underpin what I'm trying to say. Not because John's Gospel, there's anything wrong with it, but in terms of what I want to say this morning, Mark becomes a little bit more practical perhaps. And so please bear with me if you want to put your finger in John's gospel, like I said, chapter 6. Otherwise, Mark, also chapter 6, but from verse 30. Let me read it to you quickly. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. And then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place, get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than half a year's wages. Are you going to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. And then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the grass. And they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. And just to there. So let me just try and paint the picture for you because I want to try and make it real for us uh, for today. They were tired, Jesus' disciples. They were tired. They come back to him And he says, let's get away from this and go on ahead and we'll just get some time out. So let me stop there and ask you, do you find time to get away from it all? When things get a bit hectic for you, do you take time to get away from it all? Because you know what? Even Jesus did it. I sometimes think and I look at this crazy world we're in right now. People are pushing themselves way beyond the bounds of sensibility, if you like. Because we're under pressure, this COVID pandemic has changed the way we do life so much. And people are so tense and so focused and and so uptight about what has to be done. Are we taking time to get away from it all? In a sense, that's exactly what this is about. Well-versed is a time to just back off and spend a little bit of time in God's Word, finding a solitary place where we can just recharge our batteries, if you like. And so in the story, the crowd see them leave and they run ahead of them. And please notice that nowhere in this passage or anywhere, if you read the same passage in the other Gospels, does Jesus say, I'm tired. Doesn't say it. He's just trying to be there for his people because the people were lost. They were chasing after him. They were looking for answers to their lives. Think about it. We're still doing it. So, I want to ask the question, what do you do? Who do you go to when you feel lost? In spiritual terms, we come to well-versed. 
We go to worship. We go into Bible study. All these things are, are designed to help us when we feel lost. But what do you do when you feel lost? And this passage is about Jesus' compassion for the people who, who were lost and didn't know what they were going to do with themselves. And he needs to teach them. And there are just two little verses I want to share with you because I'm asking the question, are we teachable? Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then into Matthew chapter 14, verse 14, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. This whole scenario, if you go back to this passage from verse 35, the disciples are starting their practical things. How are we going to feed these people? And so they tell Jesus, tell everybody to go away. But Jesus has a plan. Think about it. Nowhere does Jesus chase the people away. He actually calls them to himself and he does something for their situation. And what Jesus' plan is that he's going to use the disciples to feed the crowd. Think about it. All he has to use today, today, is us to feed the crowd. Because he says to the disciples, you feed them. Now, how would we feel if Jesus said to us, you go, you go and feed my people. You go and get alongside them. You be with them and help them in their times of struggle. And so this is a challenge for us as we read this passage. What are we doing? Verse 35 is about the five loaves and the two fish. Come on, that, that little boy's supper was hardly enough for one person. And if you think about it, this was one of Jesus' greatest miracles. 5,000, and if you read the passage carefully, 5,000 men. <laughs> Never mind the women and the children. And, you know, we sort of focus on the 5,000, but think about it. There were many, many more than that because of the wives and the kids. And Jesus creates enough food for everyone. Now, let me ask you, when has Jesus fed you? Because well-versed, in a sense, is a, is a time of feeding. But what else? Are you in a Bible study somewhere else? Are you part of a care group somewhere? Are you part of a ministry in the life of the church that feeds people, not necessarily food to eat, but in other needs? Because the challenge, in a sense, that Jesus is making here is, I can't do it all. I need you to do something with me. And the whole passage of this feeding of the 5,000 really is, if you think about it, nothing is impossible for God. What looked like an impossibility for Jesus turns out to be one of his greatest miracles. Think, Jesus takes what the boy has, the little bit that that little boy had, and uses it, and uses it way beyond its potential. And so I think that Jesus is asking us to give him what we have. We may think that we have little to give. We may think we are poor, not necessarily in financial terms. Jesus says, give me what you have. Give me what you have. Because if we give Jesus what we have, he can do mighty things. Now, what do we have to give Jesus? What do you have to give to Jesus? Your time, your talents, your wealth, your energy, there's just so much potential listening to what I'm saying this morning, just to a few hundred people maybe. But remember that when Jesus feeds people, they're satisfied and they are energized and they are encouraged to go and make a difference. So my question to you this morning is, what does Jesus have that you need today? What does Jesus have that you need from him. So just as Jesus gives physical food, he also offers living water. In John 4 verse 10, he speaks about living water. 
and that when we've drunk from the well, we'll never be thirsty again. He offers bread in this context, in the sense that we'll never be hungry again. What is it? It's the bread of life. It's the spiritual relationship. It's the journey that we have with him. If Jesus can feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, surely he can feed us bodily and spiritually or feed everyone who comes to him in faith. Because we need spiritual food. Folks, think of this pandemic. We need spiritual food badly. We were chatting just a few minutes ago before we started this recording, Ralph, Luke, and myself. And we were just saying how lost people are at the moment, how frightened people are at the moment, how uptight people are at the moment, how angry, how sad, how confused. And in a sense, the feeding of the 5,000, it's Jesus saying, come, come, and I'll feed you. Come, I'll encourage you. Come, I'll bless you. Come, I will journey with you. Do you need to come? Feeding of the 5,000 is not just a tremendous miracle. It's an illustration how the kingdom of God grows one life at a time as we reach out in God's name to feed people emotionally, spiritually, physically in any which way. It's a parable about mission, if you like. Ask yourself, when did the five loaves and those two fish begin to grow? Those loaves and fish began to grow as they left the hands of the disciples, as the disciples began to distribute it, as they began to break it and pass it out. That's when the loaves and the fish began to grow. And it's exactly the same for us today. You know, what do we have to give in God's name today? I want to suggest that some Christians are providers and others are distributors. And out in the world are the hungry multitudes waiting to be fed the bread of life, the bread that tells them that they matter, the bread that sustains them and encourages them and allows them to go on. And if you think about it, folks, Jesus has chosen us to go for him. When you switch off this recording today, what are you going to do for Jesus today? As we give our resources to him, he will use us and what we bring to reach the hungry multitudes. And that's not just food. What do you and I have to bring that reaches the hungry and enriches them and blesses us? And now I can stop. Now I can stop. Let's just pray a moment. Father, what a very real challenge uh, you've given us today, that in spite of the fact that we lock down, we can make a difference. We can pick up a telephone. We can write a note. We can send an email. We can talk to a neighbor over the wall. We can do something for you today that can make a difference in your kingdom. Father, please forgive us when we believe that we don't have anything to give you. You took just that minimal amount of bread and fish and fed a multitude. You can take us and use us to feed your people, to feed your people with the bread of life, your word, your love, your grace, your mercy. And so, Father, bless us as we go our separate ways now. May it be that we can go out and make a difference uh, in your world. However we do that and however we do it, let's do it safely. But, oh God, we can go for you and we will go for you today. And so thank you for our time this morning. Bless us now as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day, folks, and I pray that God will just bless you for this day and always.